I know that there are many of you who watch these videos who are already full-time investors and there are many of you who want to be full-time investors. The first question I have for you if you want to be a full-time investor is why? Why would you want to do that? I would not recommend it to anybody. But if you really want to be a full-time investor, there are a few things you need to know before. That's why I believe in today's video, it is important to talk about these things. What do you need to know if you want to be a full-time investor? Before we go into details and talk about all of this, please make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're on the YouTube channel, my name is Ishfaq and I'm an elite popular investor on eToro with over 2 million US dollars in assets under management. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the coming videos. Talking about eToro, this is what I do full time. I am a full time investor on eToro. This is what I do for a living. I never had a job previously. This is what I did. It's good. I'm making good money on eToro with that. But this is not something that I will recommend to anybody because you need to understand it is not that easy for me to get where I am today. It was not that easy. If you think that uh, immediately you will join eToro or you will be a full-time investor, you'll make a lot of money, it's not going to happen. It took me a lot of time to reach here. And if you think that I make my money from my investment, it's not. So let's talk about making money from your investment first. Maybe you want to be a full-time investor. You just want to invest your money in the stock market and live from that. So let's say you want to live from the, your dividends. On average, before taxes, let's say the dividend yield on US stocks is about 2%. So you are going to invest in stocks to make 2% a year. First, you need to know how much money you need in a year. And it should be after taxes because you have to pay taxes on these dividends. So let's say in a year, you need $50,000 to live. So these are all your expenses. So that 2% dividends is $50,000 in a year. And uh, we are ignoring taxes and all. Now, how much money do you need to invest to have $50,000 in dividends at least a year? It's 2.5 million US dollars. So if you don't have at least, let's say $3 million because we need to talk about taxes and all, if you don't have at least 3 million US dollars to invest, don't think about living on your dividend payment. It's very hard for you to do. And even if let's say you have 3 million US dollars invested, you're a millionaire, you will live a lifestyle of only $50,000 a year. Maybe you can do it, you want to do it, you want to be frugal, but uh, I don't think most people want to do that. If you're a millionaire, you want to at least have a comfortable lifestyle. And in the United States, at least $50,000, it's not going to bring you much. Another alternative is for you to buy stocks and then sell them. Let's say you're going to buy stocks, you sell them after one year and from that realized profits, you pay your taxes, you pay all commissions and fees and then the money that is left, you live from that. How much money do you need to invest to do that? So average market returns is 10%. Let's say you're better than the market, after taxes, you can make 15%. Here you will have to invest $333,000. So let's say $350,000 you will have to invest so that you can live from a 15% gain a year. But that's nearly impossible to know for sure that you can make 15% because average market returns is 10%. What makes you think that you're going to be better than anybody to make 15% and that you can do it every year? So it's hard for you and $300,000, it's a lot of money for someone to invest. So if you think that you're going to live from your investment alone, to be a full-time investor, it's not going to happen right now. Maybe when you retire, you invest gradually, you work, you have another job, and then you gradually invest, and eventually that money grows. You have now $3 million as an investment portfolio. You can live from that in your retirement. But if today you are, let's say, 26 years old like me, and you want to live from your investment, it's not going to happen. Most people actually should not be enterprising investors, they should be defensive investors. You have another job, you take your money, you are not a full-time investor, you take your money, you invest. This is something that Benjamin Graham talks in security analysis. But now let's talk about being the enterprising investor, which means you're a full-time investor like me. So how do you live? How am I living? It's not from the investments. None of these great investors live from the investments. They have other incomes. For example, me, my main income is eToro. My second source of income are my courses on Teachables, my research partnership on Teachables. So I have these two main sources of income. My investment incomes 
unrealized or realized, I never withdraw the money. I have made, for example, in January this year, $30,000 on GameStop, realized profit. I'm not going to withdraw that money. I reinvested everything. Most of my income is from eToro. And it's only now that I'm making quite some money from eToro. Even if you ignore the money I'm making from eToro, the one I'm making from Teachable is enough for me to live my current lifestyle. And my current lifestyle in the country that I live, which is a third world country, I live with $800 a month, it's okay for me. Which means less than $10,000 a year. So this is enough for me to live in a year, including rent and everything. $10,000 a year. But in a developed country like the United States, $10,000 is not, it's nothing. And I have been investing for five years, but it's only this year that I'm making enough money to be able to have a good lifestyle. And it's not just from eToro, from my research partnership, because I make enough money now from my research partnership to live from my research partnership alone. By research partnership, I also mean the course. So I can live from teachable income alone and not eToro. But of course, the eToro income, I'm reinvesting everything like I told you. Now let's go and talk a little backstory. Usually I like to start my videos with a story, but today it's a little different because I needed to talk about this first. So what's the story? When I started investing over five years ago in 2016, I was a student then. So how did I start investing? I used to take money that I had saved and money that I was getting from my university. It was not a lot of money. I was getting about $200 from my university a month. So I started from this and I was living in Russia, which is also not a third world country, second world country. The cost of living there, it's pretty low. It's even lower than in my country. But the standard of living there is higher compared to here, but the cost of living here is higher. So I won't go into details why this is the case. But there, the cost of living in Russia and Varonezh, where I was living, it was very low. So you could live with, let's say, $300 a month. I was not paying rent. I was living in the hostel. But uh, if you were paying rent and all $500 a month, that's good for you to live in Baronet, Russia. And I was making less than that from my university. That was my only income. And from that, I could invest. I used some of my savings and I invested. And gradually, I built a, a portfolio today, which is about uh, over $75,000. But my first year as an investor, I was not a popular investor. Only in 2017, I became a popular investor and I was being paid by Itoro. I was being paid initially, it was $500 dollars a month when it grew to one thousand dollars a month and then i got demoted on it row. it was back to five hundred dollars a month so you see this type of income when i came back to my country i was making five hundred dollars a month it was less money than my expenses of course i had money saved that's what saved me so when i was making one thousand dollars a month it was too much money i was saving i was saving and then when i got demoted from it row, five hundred dollars it was too less money but i have money saved for a rainy day and even from my portfolio sometimes I had to withdraw money but it was not that easy only this year only since January this year I can say that I'm making comfortable amount of money that I don't have to worry about money again so it took me five years to reach here so if you think that you're going to be a full-time investor it's not going to happen so why did I decide to become a full-time investor it's because I'm in a country with a with low living expenditures that's why I was able to do it maybe if I was in the US I would have needed to find another job to get some money to invest because I don't have any qualifications to work in an investment bank to work in a hedge fund I was able to do this on eToro in some way you can say that I use something that was a liability to me and I made it into an asset. This is something that is also very important. If you want to be a full-time investor, you need the proper genes to be able to do that. Maybe you will disagree with me. You, you will say that anybody can be an entrepreneur, anybody can be an investor. No, it's not true. It's not true. I don't think it is true at all. You need some... There is an element of genetics in that. Even Warren Buffett said that uh, he got so rich because uh, he was born in America and because of lucky genes. So there is an element of genetics in that. There are things that are beyond your control that some people can do, others cannot do. I will never be able to be an Olympic athlete. I don't have the genes for it, but maybe you have. So it's not an issue that some people have other genes, other has other genes. But if you want to be a full-time investor, you need to know that there are some risk tolerance that you will need to have. And you will need to have this entrepreneurship gene in you. If you don't have it, I don't think you can do it. Because to make money as a full-time investor, if you don't have money, if you have 
10 million dollars to invest good for you you can make a lot of money as a full-time investor but if you don't have that much money to invest you are just starting you may need to make money as an entrepreneur first so your investment this is your business i was able to do it on itoro if you are not on itoro maybe you have to open a hedge fund i don't know but even hedge funds hedge fund managers how do they make money it's from the two percent they draw from their customers from their clients the two percent uh, annual fee and the 20 percent on the profits that's why they have these fees because they cannot live on their investments now you may be thinking what if you do both at the same time like i did because i told you initially i was not a full-time investor i was uh, a defensive investor i was still learning i made a lot of mistakes but then i became a full-time investor when i could do it what if you do this it can work but it's hard to do because according to Benjamin Graham in the, his book, The Intelligent Investor, you are either a defensive investor or an enterprising investor. You cannot be both. Hybrid investors, most of the time, they are losing money. When I was losing money, I was a hybrid investor. I was trying to do both at the same time. But in 2018, that's when I finished university. My studies was in physics, actually, and I could focus full time as an investor. But before that, I was making money, good money in the stock market. But I will say that uh, it could have gone the other way. It could have gone the other way where I lose all this money. So if you want to be a full time investor, yes, you can do it gradually, but you need to know where you're going. Don't think that you will try to do both at the same time for the rest of your life. It's not going to work. If you're in a bull market, you're doing both at the same time. Maybe it can work. But then you need to know that in five years, I have to become a full-time investor, enterprising investor. You need to have the business plan, the business model in your mind, what you intend to do. For me, it didn't really work as I was planning. It got better, actually. I was also trying to be a high ticket closer. I took that course from Dan Dog, which did not work. So I was trying to do that too at the same time. It didn't work. I tried to start a few businesses, which did not work. So I was trying all of this at the same time to be a real entrepreneur. But uh, I'm very grateful that all of these failed because today I'm a full-time investor and I'm happy with that. And you need to be happy with what you're doing. Don't just do it for the money because it demands a lot of work. If you're going to be a value investor, fundamental analyst, most of your time will be reading. Warren Buffett says he read 500 pages a day. So you are just going to read financial reports. You're just going to read books about investing, about everything. Because you need to know about everything if you are going to be an investor. You need to know about the history of the world. For example, Ray Dalio studied the last 500 year history of the world to write this book. So you need to know about history in order for you to be a good investor. And there are other things you need to know about business, other skills if you are going to invest in a semiconductor company. You need to know the physics of semiconductors at least. A good investor, according to Charlie Munger, is like a Swiss army knife. So you need to have different skills. So let me know in the comments whether you want to be a full-time investor or maybe you are already a full-time investor. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe and share. Please watch these two videos if you have missed them. Have a nice day and goodbye.